Mr. Mullen. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, Director Ray, I have several questions for you. A while ago, you were asked if you've ever dealt with a situation as big as January 6th. And I kind of just want to bring some things to your attention. Uh, how many federal law enforcement officers have been injured as a result of violence and targeted violence in Portland? I don't have the exact number, but I know it's quite a few. Yeah, quite a few, yeah. Uh, ju just in Ju July and June alone in 2020, there was 140 law enforcement, federal law enforcement that were injured in, in Portland. Uh, why is the FBI not more aggressively pursuing these crimes? Uh, I think we are aggressively investigating. Well, I, don't, I don't think yeah. I, if you don't know the number, I'd say that's pretty tight. I could tell you how many Capitol Police officers were injured during the riots here on January 6th, and I'm not even the one investigating it. And you don't know how many officers have been injured just in a two-month period, and you're telling me you're going to take it serious? I don't, I'm not seeing that. Um, under the Biden administration, there appears to be a wave of leniency being granted to individuals arrested for federal crimes in Portland. Federal prosecutors are apparently approving deferred resolution agreements in a number of cases and allowing perpetrators to do community service and avoid uh, jail time and criminal records. Uh, why are we seeing such a disparity between the individuals charged in January 6 and those that are charged in Portland? Well, let me answer that in two ways. I think the first part, uh, which is probably the most important part, is that charging decisions, prosecutorial decisions, are not made by the FBI, but are made by. No, but the you make suggestions. Offices. I get that. I understand um, that. And but that's, you absolutely that's an important bring charges. distinction. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But you absolutely bring uh, um, bring the charges to them, and then they decided how they're going to charge them. Is that correct? But, but we investigate. We bring you them the facts, and, and they decide what to, whether to. Right. So a question about whether to defer prosecution would be a decision. By the prosecutors. Well, do you think there's a disparity between the two of how they're being prosecuted January well, 6th? Well, so that gets to the second point, which is I think, uh, you know, in many cases, charges related to the capital. Uh, that's not what I'm asking. Is there a difference between the two, the way they're being charged? You have 140 plus federal officers that have been injured in Portland alone. You have federal buildings that have been attacked, been burned, been stormed, and you're not treating it the same as you are with January 6th. Would you agree with that? Yes or no? I believe we are taking, we the FBI are taking a consistent approach in both situations. Consistent. The, each, each. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that. You don't even know how many federal officers you've been charged. Uh, you said, um, uh, you, this is your quote, second March. We focus on acts of violence and violations of federal law. And when we see those, when we see those, we bring to bear the full weight of our resources, our, ex, our experiences and our partnerships. Are you bringing your full weight and resources against those organizations that support, finance, facilitate against the White House when it was stormed? We have a number of investigations related to the violence that occurred over the course of the summer. I think that's what you're referring well, to. Well, I'm right? just, just specifically talking about the White House. I mean, there was a big deal. There was 67 Secret Service officers were injured during the left-wing assault and assaults that happened simultaneously with Antifa throughout different cities. Are you bringing the full weight to that? We, we mobilized scores and scores of personnel in response to the activity during the period you described, and I was personally on scene down uh, in D.C. at the Washington Field Office Command Post way into the night, night after night during that no, whole stretch. Knowing that Antifa was behind that, yet you said in a statement that Antifa does not exist as a national organization. Are you trying to explain away Antifa and their definition, or do you believe Antifa actually exists? No, sir. Antifa is a real thing. It is not a fiction. And we then take why did you say that seriously. Antifa, this is your quote, Antifa does not exist as a national organization. That's your quote. I don't believe that's a direct quote from me, but what I can yeah, tell yes, you. Yes, sir, it actually is. Sir, what I can tell you is that we have seen adherence to the Antifa movement who organize at the tactical level, locally and regionally, in what you might call small nodes. So you do, so you do believe Antifa exists? I have consistently said Antifa exists. It's a real thing, not a fiction. I know specifically that I've said that. Well, in I, I appreciate testimony. that because we, we've reviewed many large binders full of information about people being arrested in, in Portland. And uh, by viewing their social media sites, uh, by viewing what they've been saying, they, Antifa is clearly coordinating uh, their finances, coordinating their hotels, coordinating their travel uh, throughout the whole thing. 
And, and which brings me to, has the FBI invested resources to examine how Antifa is identifying people operating in different cities, how, many, how much the money or where the money comes from, um, how they're supplying the makeshift weapons, protective gear, planning and coordination? We are using our joint terrorism task forces to investigate things like tactics, funding, logistics, So you're, re targeting, you're using that your resources to, to identify Antifa and go after them? Yes, sir. All right, with that, I yield back. Thank you.